<clears throat> okay, I want to give a little quick update on my bobber slash bar hopper project, but I want to show you my new favorite tool in the whole world. I bought a grinder, um, and I was going to rent one to cut the rear fender struts, and I went to Home Depot and walked down the tool aisle to see how much they cost. First, I was under the impression they cost a hundred or more, and uh, I got this grinder. It's a five and a half amp with some accessories here for uh, $40 plus tax. thought that was pretty good. So I got it home and I chopped the fender struts and I absolutely loved, <laughs> I loved this tool. In fact, I'm going to walk around the house later on tonight looking for some things I can just cut up just for the hell of it. That's how much I enjoy playing with this thing. Uh, these cutting discs right here, the guy at Home Depot said oh, you're probably going to need, you're probably going to go through four or five of them cutting those fender struts. Well that's the first disc I put on. It's still good. It's got plenty of plenty of juice left in it and I cut through both of these struts no problem at all. So um, the fender struts are cut. The fender is here. That's next. Um, I need some help. Uh, I need an extra hand holding it while I cut it so I'll wait till my son gets home or my, my stepson gets home. He can hold it for me. Um, so just a quick update, I haven't done a whole lot in terms of putting things on, I still, I'm still taking things off and a lot of what I do hinges on the front end, which I'll go through in a minute, and I'll also talk about a, a mistake I made, um, which I knew was gonna, I knew it was gonna happen, I knew eventually there'd be a mistake. But uh, I, did, I did relocate the coil over here and the ignition down here, uh, they were both over the top rocker box or the front rocker box here. Um, and eventually all these wires back here will be on top underneath the tank. Now when I bought this bike, um, it's a 07 1200 Sportster Custom, as I said in my first video. I got it home. It was really a matter of what I could, could fit into my budget and this was pretty much it. I got it at a pretty good price. It's got uh, under 9,000 miles on it, so it's still got low miles on it. Um, the only thing wrong with it when I bought it was it needed a rocker box gasket, which I'll talk about in a minute. Part of my my mistake but um, a lot me moving forward with this really a lot of it hinges on the front end and um, you know my initial thought was that I really hated this big 21 inch front wheel and I really liked the look of the Sportster 48 fat front wheel you know the 16 inch wheel with the fat tire so I was able to find locally an old 16 inch wheel from a, a 70s iron head sports. So I uh, took the spokes out of it. I took the spokes out of my 21 inch wheel, took the hub out. So I'll use the hub from my 21 inch wheel and probably this 16 inch wheel um, to put on this bike. I sold the wheel from the, the 21 inch wheel and the spokes on eBay. And just once again, any changes I make to this bike are all being funded by parts that I sell on eBay. So the stuff that I take off of here, um, anything that I buy that's new or replacement is funded by what I sell. Uh, the only money on my own that I've spent so far has been on some tools. Uh, you know, the lift right there, the grinder, and some other tools that I had to buy. So my initial plan was to use this 16-inch wheel. And then I thought about it and I said, well, if, to change this, the triple trees on this front end and make it wider, which is what I have to do to use that wheel, is not cheap. It's going to cost me, to do it the right way, it's going to cost me about $450 for a kit that where I can use my standard 39 millimeter forks. Um, the kit includes both triple trees, the bushings, uh, the axle, which I don't need, but it comes with it, the spacers, uh, the bearing kit, it comes with everything for $450. It's a lot of money. Um, and my thought afterwards was, well, maybe I won't use that wheel. You know, maybe I'll use this 19-inch wheel that I have. Still much smaller than a 21-inch wheel. Uh, not much, but still smaller than a 21-inch wheel. Uh, a little bit bigger than this. Not what I really want to use, but maybe I'll use that. So I brought that wheel over here and tried to fit that in this narrow uh, opening. And that wouldn't fit in here either. So this stupid design is only designed for that ugly 21-inch wheel. So no matter what I do on the front end, I have to get new triple trees. So um, that's going to be a big expense. So that's and everything. A lot of things hinge on that. So I mean, I can't get handlebars until I get those. I can't splice wires until I get the triple trees. I can't do anything with putting the front wheel on 
uh, until I get triple trees. There's nothing I can do until I get those, and right now I just don't have enough money put aside for it, so I need to sell some more parts on eBay. Um, so once I do that, I can buy those and put the triple trees on. I'm going to take these forks apart and have the lower end powder coated uh, at the same time I have the wheel and the hub done. So that's something I'm going to have to wait on, probably take me a few more weeks. Um, but what I was able to do, the other thing I didn't like about this bike was the big, what I call pancake style tank, kind of flat and wide that comes on the custom. Uh, I like more of a peanut shaped tank. Um, not after, I don't need a, a big tank in terms of fuel and going a long distance. This is going to be a bar hopper and a kind of an around town weekend type of thing. So um, I don't plan on going cross country with it. So I was looking for a smaller tank. I really liked the, the peanut style tank on the 48. Uh, what I was able to find was I was able to trade over the internet, trade my tank off of this bike for this tank, which is from a Nightster. Uh, it's a little bigger than I, than I wanted. Uh, again, I like the peanut style tank from the 48. But what I like about this tank is it, it's the color that I wanted to paint the rear fender, vivid black. And I like the Harley logo on here. Uh, it's not a it's not a stick on badge. It's it's you know it's um, I guess it's not I don't think it's graphics either. I'm sure it's it's a a decal that. Uh, you know, it's cleared over. But I like I like the uh, the color. I like the um, the logo. It does have some surface scratches, but I think most of what's on here can be buffed out. It looks like it's in pretty good shape overall. So I think I, I made a pretty good trade. So that's the tank I'm going to put on here. But even that kind of has to wait till I have the front end on because right now these risers hit the tank, and that's without a, a tank rise. I'm going to raise it up about two inches. So. Um, these risers, uh, I'm not going to use these risers anyway, but they hit the tank. Um, so I have the tank to put on. I've got to get the, the uh, front end done. I chopped this rear end, like I said. I have the fender here ready to, ready to chop. I'm going to give that a try and see if I can um, come close to cutting on a straight line, which has never been something I was any good at, so we'll see what happens. Um, I have pipes already. Uh, these are stock, the top end stock. The mufflers are Vance and Hines slip-on. I got the whole setup, both of them, for a hundred bucks, which I thought was a really good deal. Um, the other thing is, let's see here, uh, what else did I do? Oh, the rocker box. Here's, here's why I made a mistake. Now, I've, I, I'm no mechanic by any stretch, so I kind of dove into this thing and figured I would just start tearing it apart. I wouldn't do anything I really wasn't comfortable with. and. Um, one of the problems with the bike when I bought it was that it had a leak in the lower rocker box uh, gasket. So I took the rocker box cover off, bought the gasket set, I think it cost me $17, replaced the gasket set, and put the screws back, put it back on, torqued them down, put some blue Loctite on them, and I had one screw left, actually two screws, this screw here, and the screw that goes right here. I had those two screws left to do, um, and I went in the house to take a phone call. I came back out about a half hour later, not thinking about the fact that the Loctite would dry up uh, in a half hour's time. And as I torqued down this bolt right here, it snapped on me. The only saving grace, possibly, is that, here it is, is that it snapped in a spot where... This is where it would fall pretty much. So it snapped in a spot where I think I'm going to have some stud left coming out of here. Enough to grab onto. Um, so I'm, I, I'm not too worried about getting that out. I don't think I'm going to have to drill it. I think I can probably, depending on how much it's sticking out, um, I think I can probably get a pair of pliers on there, um, you know, carefully and kind of work it, work it out. But it does have Loctite on there, so it's going to be difficult. But the other option is to leave it on. The most of the thread, let's see here, most of the thread is still inside here. So I, I'm pretty confident that I could leave it like that and there'd be no issues. And the worst that would happen is it would start to leak a little bit over here. I, I think, again, not being a mechanic, I'm not sure, but I think. Um, so part of me says leave it on. Uh, I'm going to get the top of the rocker boxes powder coated black, take them out, get them powder coated, put it together, and just leave it and see what happens. The other part of me says, you know what, for peace of mind, you're better off changing it. But to be honest, I really don't feel like diving back into that right now. And getting to some of those bolts was, was, was a pain in the ass and kind of a nightmare. and You know, not a big deal. I mean, it took me a couple hours to get it done. 
Uh, and I saved a lot of money by doing it, but I just don't feel like diving back into it. So that's my first mistake, hopefully my only mistake. I'm very confident and comfortable with, about everything else that I'm doing, with the exception maybe of, of some of the wire splicing, but I don't think that's going to be a big, a big deal either. Um, one question I have, maybe one of you guys out there can answer, and again, any comments you have or suggestions, please leave them, because I'm, I'm open to them. Um, is this speedometer housing? You know, right now, it goes so that this speedometer, hang on a second here, this speedo faces inward towards the tank. Well, this won't work with my tank because it's going to hit up against the tank. I need it to face outward towards the front wheel. It looks to me like this is just a housing. There's two small screws back here. One goes here and one goes here. I took out, but the, the housing still doesn't budge. There's a, a weatherproof gasket in the front here. Um, I mean, I, I can see the speedometer is separate when I look inside here. I just don't know if this housing is meant to come off. So if anybody out there knows if this housing comes off, please let me know. Uh, let me know how to, how to get it off. Um, I just need to spin it around so it's facing the other way. I was going to keep it and use it. I just want to spin it around so it faces the other way. Um, the other question I have for somebody is if they have any suggestions on how to get how to get these risers off. These bolts, right? Where are they? Come on. Right there. Those are on there so tight. The gorilla that put these on must have used every bit of his strength plus a gallon of red Loctite because I can't get him to budge. Now, you know, yes, it's, I mean, these things are, it's off, the, it's, the bike is lifted off the ground, so, and these, and the front forks are moving back and forth, which makes it a little bit harder to grip, but I still should be able to budge that. I even had a wrench on there and got a hammer and, and knocked it around a bit with a hammer trying to loosen it up. I have no idea how to get those loose. Now, if I'm going to change the triple trees, it doesn't really matter because these will come off with the top triple tree anyway, but I'd like to get them off. Um, and I just, I don't know how I could possibly loosen that. I mean, there's no way to get any WD-40 or oil in there. I can't get to them from this side of the riser because it's inside. I mean, I don't really know what to do. So if you have any suggestions on how to get that off, that'd be great too. Um, you know, and that's, that's pretty, that's pretty much it for now. I, uh, you know, the um, primary cover is going to go for powder coat. The rocker box top is going to go for powder coat. The wheel and hub are going for powder coat eventually. The um, battery cover and oil cover are black now. Um, but I'm going to have them, uh, they've got some, some chips and scratch, scratches in them. So I'm going to have them blasted and painted the same color black as the tank, which will be the same color black as this fender. I just have to find somebody that's priced reasonably locally here that can do that because everyone seems to want a lot of money to paint. So. Um, uh, that's about it. Took off the, uh, ch the belt guard. I'm going to leave that off. Once I get the fender cut, um, get the triple trees ordered, um, you know, I'll, I'll post another update, but that's all I got. So f this, is, this is from somebody who uh, really has very limited mechanical ability and very basic or maybe slightly above basic tools in my toolbox. Um, We'll see how this goes. So, uh, my wife doesn't believe it'll ever get put back together again in the same order it, it came off. So, and she could she could very well be right. But we'll see. Oh, I did put these 430 shocks on here too. These progressive shocks. You know, part of me thinks that maybe I should just have gone with a rigid, that bobber look. Uh, certainly would have been a lot cheaper. And I still may. I may just sell these shocks, but they were expensive. They were almost four hundred dollars for the set. So, and those didn't come out of money from this bike, they come out of my pocket too. So I had bought those a while ago. So the shocks and the tools, I probably spent about 600 of my own money on that stuff. But everything else, um, you know, the, the, uh, the exhaust pipes and the, the, uh, the wheel and the coil, ignition. I bought a horn reloc relocation kit. That stuff has all come out of money funded from stuff that I sold here. So anyway, that's it. Any suggestions you have, love to hear them. Uh, I look at a lot of videos on YouTube. Some of you guys have some really nice bobbers, uh, bar hoppers that you've You've customized and made, and um, yes, I'm probably copying some of the things that you did, so hope you don't mind that. But uh, thanks for watching. See ya.